Hello, you're watching Avenue X, and today let's talk about a recently finished airing Chinese web drama, Yi Ren Zhi Xia. I am nobody. This is a 27 episode web drama that has finished airing on the platform Youku recently. It is directed by Xu Hongyu, who also directed a couple of years ago Crossfire, Chuan Yue Huo Xian, which I really loved. For the adapted script from the original IP of this drama, the director did take part in it. I believe in one of the interviews I've watched, he did mention it. But the credited writers are Jiang Feng. Chen Shi Shu, Wang Zixuan. The drama is based on an existing IP that was originally a manga, first published around the year 2015, then got adapted into an animation in 2016. Up to now, the animation series has already had five seasons running. The drama version 27 episodes supposedly is only the season one. There's rumor about the second season getting shot very soon. While this television series thing is going on, we also have a film version that's supposed to be a three film series in the making right now by the director Wu Shan, who has given us the summer epic mythology film function creation of gods for this drama version our lead actors are Peng Yuchang, Wang Yinglu, Hong Minghao, plus many other people as this is quite a big ensemble cast drama the drama itself was shot at the end of 2021 leading up to early 2022 and it did go through quite a bit of post-production an epic drama while it first went live on august the 4th this year for the first day they aired four episodes and then the next day they announced they are being stopped not telling you when it's gonna air the rest of the episode the rumor is the drama actually hasn't gone through the last stage of censorship and getting the license to air online and yoku just aired it therefore it got pulled off in immediately until it finally comes back in September and airing the rest of the episodes. This is not the first time that Yoko did this this year. Earlier they did it with Guang Yuan. You wonder what is going on with their management. After watching 27 episodes of this drama, what is my opinion about it? This is a very divided drama and for different type of audiences, you will get very different rating. Original IP fan. And even within that, you can divide it into the manga fan or the anime fan. And then for people who have never read or watched the original, IP, you can at least divide the audience group into these three. I am one of those people who are completely unfamiliar with the original IP. Most of my opinion will be just about the drama itself. Although I do have <laughs> heard a lot and talked to people who actually know the original IP, so I know where they come from. If I only look at it as a drama, I'll rate it as one goat mine drama. And I'm guessing if I happen to be an original IP fan, I will rate it lower than that. That shouldn't come to anybody as a surprise due to the discrepancy of a lot of things between the original IP and the television series. As usual, let me quickly introduce you to what the story is about and then we're gonna go into the details. I am nobody. I think the original IP's English title is The Outcast. It is talking about a group of people who have basically superpowers. It's traced back to this power source as qi. It's a type of energy and source that can give people all types of superpowers. Think of it as China's hero that television series all these people are called yi ren yi means different so they're different from normal people are generally divided into two groups one let's say are the good people and one <laughs> bad people the good people are under the proper governance of the official organization of the country that kind of in secret in the background organizes and manages all people with superpowers and then there's the other group who are against the establishment they're called nardotong and Quan Xing. One is sounding very much like a courier service. The other is based on a type of philosophy of Chinese traditional, many types of philosophies. And our main character, played by Peng Yuchang in this drama, Zhang Chulan, comes from one of such family, and his grandfather is actually one of the super powerful people. A couple of generations back, there was a huge event that happened and killed a lot of very important people. And a lot of that is buried in the past and is like a secret. So our story starts with our main character, Zhang Chulan, in his college years, waking up to his power and also trying to search the past history of his family lineage, of the death of his grandfather, and people start to join in around him with all kinds of different motivations due to they know who he is and he supposedly would inherit certain superpowers. He will go on the hero's journey and wake into his power and find out the past. And then there are a couple of main characters who would be very essential to his story, such as Feng Baobao, played by Wang Yinglu. Also, there's another very important character 
character played by Ho Minghao, Wang Ye, is also one of the favorite characters of the original IP. That aside, let's talk about what is good and what is not so good about this drama. Mostly just from a drama viewer's point of view who hasn't read the original manga or watched the anime. On the positive end, for this drama, number one is it has a very strong style. Also, if you liked Crossfire, Chuan Yue Xian, a couple of years ago, that overall editing style, music style, pacing, visual, you can tell it's done by the same director because this drama is not a game drama. It is focused on superpowers. You will have a lot more special effects, lights and explosions and weird shots and shots that really give you a strong sense of it comes from a manga background. I'm gonna use this skill now, put the camera on me with a weird focal length and then special effects behind me. That wouldn't happen to a normal drama and for this type of drama it will happen all the time. It gives you the strong sense of bridging the live action and the manga that some people may find really interesting and exciting, some people may find it's embarrassingly funny. So totally depends on you, but at least it's different. The second thing I really enjoyed with this drama is actually the couple of main actors, actress and their main roles. Given that I don't really know much about if there's a significant difference between their performance compared to the original on um, paper ones. Peng Yuchang, I have always had the confidence in his acting when he is doing the type of role that he can do very well. And he is one of those young actors who does fit the type of ordinary person but has a quite strong and interesting character but still feeling very grounded and you believe he can be an ordinary guy in life type of actor. I had no problem watching his performance of his most of the time rather embarrassing <laughs> character Zhang Chulan and I really enjoyed Wang Yinglu's performance of Feng Baobao. Early on she may appear to be a little bit too robotic because she is in a way not really fully there but as time goes on I really enjoyed her performance and she starts to grow on me and you really really want to find out what happened to her why she is the way she is. Overall I think it's a very successful portrayal of a very unusual female character. The other thing that surprised me is this is the first drama I think I officially finally managed to uh, get Ho Minghao and what is attractive about him. His styling in this drama adds a lot of let's say credits to his already quite good looks. I also think the lighting of this drama flatters him better than the other dramas I've seen him in. Even with all those ridiculous dangling bits of the hair that never gets combed up and does not make logical sense for anybody to do that, you basically have to comb your hair up and then pick these ones out again. I doubt any guys would really enjoy that, like flowing in front of your face constantly. But anyway, <laughs> I enjoyed his performance and his laid back way of talking. It really adds a lot to his character than all the previous dramas where he gets dubbed with a very proper and uptight voice. The relaxed voice suits him so much better. So in the acting department and character department, I don't have a huge problem. Before I go, I would emphasize again, that is because I have never read the original manga. Maybe you will have a very different reaction if you did. So these are the two major things I think can attract people into the drama. Now let's talk about what is not so ideal about this drama. The first thing I want to mention is I do have heard and I know the complaints from people who are the original IP fan. And I think there's an interview online about the director, why he made such decisions. One of the main reasons is obviously censorship, but the other thing is he tries to cram things and give it conclusion and following the dramas narrative logic so he rewrites and changed a lot of settings of the original IP so that it can end for the drama. You know the type of Game of Thrones situation but not as bad I say but still same nature. It's just one of those not so lucky I'd say manga anime based IP adaptation compared to other more successful ones that it has too many hiccups and too many things that will never satisfy everybody. The second thing I don't like about this drama, if we just look at it as a drama, is it has that embarrassing element of to satisfy maybe certain roles about uh, censorship that they have to type out the ending of so many characters that are not shot in drama version because they probably don't have that as footages in huge white fonts 
on screen about this person got punished, blah, 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 blah. It's so embarrassing looking, okay? And it happened so many times for so many characters. You clearly can tell. It's the type of, because we have to put it there, otherwise bad people don't get what they deserve. It wouldn't go through, so we have to do that. And it does not make logical sense. For those characters to get any kind of punishment in that way, recently there's a film that I just watched in theater that has the exact same thing, is putting everybody's picture at the end and type out their ending know what happened to them because clearly that's there for censorship and it's actually not in the original script so they never shot any footage that's moving about that ending so you can just take a snapshot of these people previously somewhere in this film or television and just type out it looks very ugly and i think they picked really ugly and huge font in this drama to do that just to show how annoyed they are we have no choice we have to do this but see our frustration in the choice of fonts so that's another thing by the end of the drama when i have seen it too many times i was like clenching my teeth small point but so annoying third thing i think is the major problem of this drama disregarding casting choices difference between manga and drama just looking at it as a visual storytelling work it never really has a clear clue about what it's doing about the world setup about the superpowers where does it come from, right? Why do people have that? What is it? It never has a very clear idea. Unlike Hero, that type of drama, it just says it's your DNA. Okay, you have a mutation. This is like, is it mythological? Like you never quite know, right? You inherit it. So clearly it's genetic, but then they don't really bring that out that much. And then for the eight super powerful skills, exactly what they are each, what they do each, for those different families and why they are so important, blah, blah. It never has a clear explanation. Also, the two camp that are against each other, the courier service, Nardotong, representing the good people and the Quanxing representing the bad people. What is their origin story? How did it all start? What's the development of their <laughs> combat through time? Do we have a good idea about what they each stand for and why they are at each other's throat? What's the power play? All that is actually very vague represented and never clearly teased out for you. Even down to for the main character Zhang Chulan, his superpower that's inherited from the grandfather and supposedly he is the guy who can use it, the Qi Ti Yuan Liu, exactly what does it do, right? Why is it so sought after? The drama version gives you <laughs> a representation of what the power can do at the very end, but it's so funny the way they did it. And it doesn't actually follow any logic about how you can make it happen. And then there are other skills within this eight super skills that are still not fully represented or explained. And in a way they're assuming that people who are gonna go in and watch this drama know already what is the original setup so that they don't have to be so working hard on making sure everybody gets what they're doing. As somebody who's watched too many dramas already, I still find it's really hard to follow what the heck is going on <laughs> with all the different parties and who is for what. I doubt it's gonna be easy for anybody who watched less dramas and not knowing the original IP. I think that's the biggest problem. And it starts to make me feel really unsatisfied and unhappy about the overall attitude of the creator of this story. Yes, you have a lot of limits. Yes, you run into a lot of problems, but it's your responsibility to think that your work is gonna be seen by people all over the places. They don't have obligation to know the IP before they come in. They should be able to understand the basics of your story, even if they never know anything about it. And somehow like that is not important for this drama. <laughs> At least as I was watching, I'm like, this part looks exciting. That section is interesting. This scene is nice. Oh, this actor actually has performed exceeding my expectation, but linking it all together, what is the story I'm watching? I have, uh, it's all very, very muddled up. That would be my overall uh, opinion on this drama. It's still kind of worth watching for its unique elements and characters and qualities and you really cannot find in other dramas. But I would suggest not having too high a hope and expectation of how well this drama is gonna entertain you as a complete and well-written and worked out story. Finally, I'd say a little bit looking forward to the film version, supposedly there will be three, to see different people telling the same story in very different ways and also different medium. At least that would be an interesting thing for a reviewer to do. That should be the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I'm New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.